This is lesson one of the fractions unit. We are adding and subtracting fractions today. Before we add and subtract, we need to define a couple things. First thing we need to talk about is what a least common multiple is, because I'm going to be using this term throughout the lesson. We can call it LCM for short, LCM standing for least common multiple. When we have two or more numbers, the least common multiple is the lowest or smallest multiple in common between the two numbers. So for example, let's take the numbers four and six. Okay, so I'm gonna do multiples of four first. So multiples of four would be four times one, so four, four times two, eight, four times three, 12, four times four, 16, and you could keep going. And then I'll do them for um, six. So six times one is six, six times two is 12, six times three is 18, six times four is 24, and I could keep going. Now the one that they have in common, the lowest one they have in common, they have more than one in common, but the lowest multiple they have in common is 12. So that would be the LCM. The LCM of four and six is 12. It's their lowest multiple that's in common for both of those, okay? So when we add or subtract fractions, we need to make sure that the fractions are out of the same, like they have the same size pieces. Um, so we need to make sure the denominator is the same. And so we call that creating a common denominator, the bottom number. And in order to choose a common denominator, we will we want to pick the the LCM, the least common multiple. We don't want to make really big fractions if we don't have to, so we want to choose the least or the lowest um, common multiple for the two denominators to be our common denominator. Okay, let's do some examples. So first example here, I have one out of two plus three out of seven. So my denominators are two and seven. So I need to think of the least common multiple of two and seven. Now you don't have to write this out every time. If you can just do it mentally in your head, that's totally fine. For this very first one, I'm gonna list them out. And then for the ones afterwards, we're just going to um, think of the LCM. Okay, so multiples of two are two, four, six, eight, 12, or sorry, I missed 10. 10, 12, 14, etc. Okay, multiples of seven are seven, 14, 21. Okay, and I can see what my lowest common multiple is. It's 14. So I'm going to try and make these fractions both out of four or both out of 14. Okay, so to make the first one out of 14, I'm going to need to multiply by 7 because 2 times 7 is 14. And what I do to the denominator, I need to do to the numerator as well so I can keep it as equivalent fraction. So it's going to become 7 out of 14. That's the same as 1 out of 2. Now my other fraction, I'm going to need to multiply the 7 by 2 to make 14, so I'll do the same to the numerator. So 3 times 2 is 6. It's going to be out of 14. So now both my fractions are, they're equivalent, they're the same fractions, but now they're both out of 14. And so because the denominators are the same now, the fractions are like the same, out of the same size pieces, and we can add them together. And when we add them together, all we do is add the numerators. So 7 plus 6 is 13. Actually, I'm going to just make a little rule for myself that I'm going to write each new step on a new line. So I get 13 out of 14, and that's my final answer. If we can reduce those fractions at the very end, we can. This one cannot be reduced, so it would be my final answer. Okay, let's try the next one. Six and four, and I'm subtracting here, but it's the same process. We already talked about six and four above. The lowest, least common multiple for six and four is 12. So I'm gonna make these out of 12. That's gonna be my least common multiple. So to make six into 12, I'm gonna to need to multiply it by two and then same for the numerator. So five times two would be 10. Okay, and so for my second fraction, I'm gonna make it into a 12. So four times three is 12. So I'm gonna be doing the same to the numerator. 
Okay, the fractions are the same, but they're now scaled up, so they have the same size denominators. And now I simply subtract. So 10 minus 9 is 1. I don't change the denominator. Once I've made that common denominator, it stays the same. Okay, so my final answer is 1 out of 12. All right, next one here, 15 and 5 are my two denominators. This is a special one where I don't have to change both here. Um, so save yourself some trouble if you can. So the 5 actually can be changed directly into a 15 by multiplying by 3. So sometimes you only need to convert one of the fractions. So these are both going to be out of 15. This one stays as 7. This one is going to become 3 out of 15. So now that I have a common denominator, I'm going to simply add the numerators together and I get 10 out of 15. Now this one can be reduced and we should reduce it. You should always write your final answers as fully reduced. Um, we can divide both by five. So I get two out of three as my final answer. Okay, next concept here. To add or subtract mixed numbers. So this time, if you look at the examples here, I have mixed fractions. Um, this is when you sometimes have a whole number in front. We need to change them first to improper fractions. And then we're gonna use the exact same rules as we did before, but the numbers might be a little bit bigger than we were doing. Um, than we were used to before, but it's the same process, improper fractions. So when you have a mixed number, um, like five and two thirds, for example, um, we can change it to a, an improper fraction, so that's with no whole number at all. So what we need to think about here is that the five, the five is five wholes, and each piece size is three. So we're gonna multiply by three, and then we're gonna add the two that we already have there. So we're gonna end up with five times three plus two. And so that'll be 17 over three. Okay, so 17 over three is equivalent to five and two thirds. They're the same fraction, but it's a lot easier to work with the 17 over three than it is with the original one. So this is a mixed number. We don't really wanna work with those they're harder to work with and our algorithms and steps don't really, they change if you try and work with the mixed numbers. Um, but if you work with improper fractions, much easier to do. So we're going to do that. Okay. Or I shouldn't say fractions, it's a fraction. Okay. Let's work with these two. So it's three and a half minus one and six over seven. So first thing that we're going to do is change these two improper fractions. We need to do that before anything else. So for three and a half, we're gonna multiply three times two and add one. So you get seven over two. The denominator never changes. For the next one, we're gonna do one times seven plus six, so that's 13 over seven. All right, great. So now that we have two uh, improper fractions, we're gonna create a common denominator. And we've already worked with two and seven, which is nice. So we're gonna make a common denominator of 14 because we know the least common multiple of two and seven is 14. So we're gonna multiply the first fraction by seven and the second fraction by two to make 14 as the denominator in both. Okay, so the first fraction, seven times seven is 49. And for the second fraction, 13 times two is 26. And now that we have a common denominator, we are just going to subtract. So 49 minus 26 is 23 out of 14. Now I prefer you just leave it as um, an improper fraction. You don't need to change it back into a mixed number just because in higher levels of math, typically we actually work more often with improper fractions. But if it is a word problem where it kind of makes sense to change it back into a mixed number, then you would do that. So sometimes like in baking or things like that, um, you would want to use mixed numbers. But typically if it's if there's no application or no word problem, I just tell students to leave it as an improper fraction. Um, but you should reduce it if you can. This one can't be reduced. Okay, you might want to pause the video here and try this one on your own or you can do it with me. We want to change to improper. We only need to change one of them this time. So the first one is still five over three. And second one, two times four. So multiply, we get eight and we add on three. So 11 over four. And we need to think of a least common multiple of three and four. 
that would be 12. So we want to make a common denominator is going to be 12 here. That's the lowest multiple of both 3 and 4. So we're going to multiply the 3 by 4, and then we're going to multiply the 4 by 3. So we get 20 over 12 plus 33 over 12. And now that the denominators are the same, we can just simply add the numerators together. 20 plus 33 is 53 over 12, and that cannot be reduced. So we just leave it as is. Okay, and that's the end of the lesson.